everyone. Uh, so today we're going to cover chapter four of Yar, the Pirate's Guide to R, and this chapter is on indexing vectors and comparing vectors. So, um, so far we should know how to do simple summary statistics on vectors. So let's say we have a vector A with some data, and we can run that to the console, and there's our vector, and then we can easily calculate means of the vector. So you have the mean value in this is 4.8, standard deviation is 1.92. Uh, but frequently when we have uh, data sets, we're not going to want to analyze or we're going to want to calculate some summary statistic or do other some operation on just a part of data. So for example, what if I just wanted to get the mean of the first three values of this vector? or the first four values, something like that. Now you can imagine if you had a really large survey or something, um, maybe you have the data split by gender and you want to calculate some column, for example, some, uh, maybe you want to calculate the mean age of people, but you want to separately calculate that for, um, let's say, men versus women, something like that. Now to do that, we're going to use uh, indexing of vectors. So just to give you another concrete example, let's say that you did a uh, survey of five pirates and you asked each pirate, uh, what's your favorite board game? And you got these uh, results. So we'll call this vector favorite game or fave.game. And let's say the responses from the five pirates was, oh, first one said pirates of Catan. Uh, second one says Pirates of Catan, and now let's say the third one says uh, no, they prefer Piratopoly, great game. And the next one also says Piratopoly, how do you spell Piratopoly? I think that's right. And let's say the last one, yeah, Piratopoly again. Now we could also ask those same five pirates some other uh, question, so in this case let's say we asked how long is your beard? Um, and we'll just say it's in centimeters. And let's say the responses were, let's store this in a vector called beard length. And the responses could be, let's say, 30, 24. Third pirate has no beard, so they have zero. And the next one has 40, and the next one has 15. And let me run these two commands so these are stored. Okay. Now, uh, if we wanted to get the average beard length, of course, we could just say mean a beard length, and we get 21.8. But let's say we wanted to calculate the average beard length separately for pirates whose favorite game was Pirates of Catan, and ones whose favorite um, board game was Piratopoly. Um, and for this, we're going to use indexing. And uh, just to, to quickly show you the answer, and then we'll explain uh, in more detail how it works, to do that, we'll um, index using brackets. And what this allows you to do is to specify which values of a vector you want to analyze. So in this case, we could say, give me the mean value of beard length, but only give, you, give me the values for which favorite.game is equal to pirates of, oops, pirates of Catan. And when I run this, I get a value of 27. Now, just to show you how that's working, uh, let's just run this portion right here. So let's just um, run beard length bracket favorite game equals equals Pirates of Catan, uh, but ignore the mean. And what this will give you is just the values of beard length for which favorite game is equal to uh, Pirates of Catan. So those will be for the first two pirates, and we get 30 and 24, and that's what we have here. Now, of course, we can just repeat this command for um, pirates whose favorite game is something else. Uh, pirate up Let me run that. We see, okay, for those pirates, the average beard length is 18.33. So this is generally how you can use uh, bracketing to index a vector and to pull out specific values that you're interested in. Okay, but now let's go into a bit more detail on what we're doing. So let me clear this. So um, indexing with vectors uh, can be done in a few ways. Uh, it can be done uh, with uh, numerical indices. And let me show you how that works. Let's say we have a vector A 
which is oh, five, three, eight, seven, six. So there's five elements. So one way is just to say, let's say we want to get the first value of a. Well, we put in a bracket and then say one. And then you can see that the result is five. So the first value of a is five. Of course, we can say, okay, now give me the fifth value. And that should be six, because that's the last one here. So you can put individual scalars in the brackets to index a vector. Um, but we can also use vectors of numbers. So let's say we want um, the first, second, and third value of a. So then we just put in a, a numerical vector, and we get the first, second, and third value, which was... Um, wait, is that right? Oh, now it's working. I think the previous value of a I had was different than the one I want. So, um, yeah, so if a is 5, 3, 8, 7, 6, then we say what's the first, second, and third value? We get 5, 3, 8. So um, you can either put, uh, so the, within the bracket should be a scalar um, or a numerical vector. And let's just put a in front of it just so you can see that we're indexing a vector. So um, if we have these, these five values in A and we want to get the mean of the first four values, then we can just say mean of A, but only give me one, two, three, and four, the first, second, third, and fourth values of A. And I run this, I get 5.75. Okay, so um, indexing with numbers is uh, a common way to, um, to do indexing. But we can also do indexing with what are called logical vectors. And here's how this works. So um, let's say again we want to index this vector a, and we want to get the uh, first, second, and third values. Well, instead of writing 1, 2, 3, we can also write logical values. So true, 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 false, false. And what this will tell r is to say the first so in a way, it's asking, should I take the first value? And you say, true, yes, take it. Second value, true. Third, yeah, take it. And then when it gets to the fourth and fifth value, then it says, okay, don't include these. So if I run this, then I get 538, the first three values of the vector, but ignoring um, the last two. And of course, you can. there's no reason why you need to put all the true values next to each other. For example, let's say I want the first, second, and fifth value of the vector, so I want 5, 3, and 6, then if I run this, I get 5, 3, 6. Um, but, yeah, so th that's how logical vectors work, but usually you don't want to type true, 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 false, false, true for your vectors. Um, instead, you might want to do, um, you want to actually create these logical vectors using other commands. So let's say, for example, we want to calculate the mean values of A, and actually let me change A a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a few really large negative values in here. So I'll add negative, let's just add one large negative value. So negative 10,000 is now in A. Now, if I just say mean of A, then the average value is an extreme negative value because this, this huge value is in here. But what if I said, well, um, this negative, this really extreme negative value, I don't want this to be part of the um, of the mean calculation. Well, what we can do is create a logical vector like this one by saying, is a less than, or sorry, is it greater than zero? Now we run this, R will then create a logical vector testing for each value in a, is it greater than zero? So the first one is five, that should be true. Yeah, second one is three, it should be true. And all of these should be true except the second to last value. And as you can see in the logical vector over here, indeed, that's the case that it says false. So um, we can just use the logic from before to say, well, give me the values of A where A is greater than zero. And if I run this, then you see that R has uh, returned to A, but it has gotten rid of this extreme negative value because for that value, the logical vector was false. So another way to see that, that's equivalent to saying A uh, give me true, 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 uh, false, true. Oops, that should be a comma. Oh, did I do that wrong? No, there should be another true in here. Yeah. So, 
I want every value except the second to last one because that's negative. And I get 5, 3, 8, 7, 6, um, which is identical to the value up here because here we're creating this logical vector um, easily within R. So I get the same value. So then if I want mean of all positive values in A, then I just say mean of A, but only the values of A for which A is greater than 0. And now I get a mean of 5.8 which again is uh, a reasonable value because now it's not including this extreme uh, negative value in the vector. Um, so uh, when you're indexing with logical vectors, what you want is several different ways that you can come up with logical vectors. And the best way to come up with logical vectors is by using um, logical commands like greater than, less than, um, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. Um, you can also use double equals, which means are they the same, or exclamation point equals, which means um, are they different, so that's different, or not equal to, equal to. Um, so um, how, can, how can we then use this? So again, let's go back to our original example, which um, I've deleted, but um, oh, actually the values are still here in my um, uh, in my working space. So let's look at beard dot length again. So these are our beard lengths and favorite dot game, and here's our, our game values. So if we want to calculate the average beard length just for pirates whose favorite game is Pirateopoly, the first thing we do is step one create a logical vector. And in this case, we want um, pirates whose favorite game is Pirateopoly. So I can just say Pirateopoly, and I'll say .log to indicate this is a logical vector. And for this, I want those cases where favorite.game is equal to Pirateopoly. Did I spell Pirateopoly correct? No, I think there's no E in it. Yeah. Okay. So I run this, and now let's look at what's in that logical vector. So what this is going to do is for each element in favorite game, it's going to ask if it's equal to Pirateopoly. If it is, then it gives me a true. If it's false, if it's not equal to, it'll give me a false. So we see for the first element of the logical vector, it's false. So I'm Pirates of, the, of Catan, that's not Pirateopoly. Second one is also false. Third one is true. Yeah, so Pirateopoly. Fourth one is Pirateopoly, that's true. And the last one is Pyridopolis. So that's also true. So there's our logical vector which will tell us, for all values in favorite game, which ones are Pyridopoly. And then we can simply use this logical vector to index the beard length vector. So if I want mean beard length of pirates who like Pyridopoly, then I can just say mean of beard.length but I'm going to index beard.length by pirate up. Again, I can't spell that. That's a hard. So pirate upoli dot lock. I run this. Again, we get the 18.33 value. Um, it's the same one we calculated um, at the beginning of the video. Um, now, I've, I've separated the steps of creating a logical vector and calculating the mean here to make it clear. But of course, you can all, also just do it all at once. So you can say, give me mean of beard length, where favorite.game equals pirate upoly. I run that. I get an NA value, probably because I misspelled pirateopoly for the billionth time in this video. And yeah, there we go. So yeah, another thing about R, if you misspell anything, R is just going to give you NA values and usually won't tell you what you did wrong. So you just have to make sure you spelled everything right. OK, so um, these are some of the most common ways to create logical vectors. Again, um, if you're using string values, you're commonly going to use double equals or not equals. So for example, let's say I wanted the mean beard length of pirates whose favorite game was not Pyridopoly. I just changed this from double equals to exclamation point equals. And this means not equal to. So for these pirates, the mean is 27. And because we know there's only two favorite games here, that value should be identical 
to the pirates whose favorite game is um, Pirates of Catan. And the value is, this, is also 27. Again, these are just identical statements in this case because there's only two types of games. Um, so this, uh, these um, are the most common ways to create logical vectors, but there's one other function uh, I want to show that's also quite helpful, and that's the in function. And what this does is it allows you to test um, if certain values are within a larger set. And let me just give you an example of that. So uh, let's say we have a vector a, and let's say these um, um, are yeah, mostly values less than 10, but then I have a few values that are really large, or that are greater than 10, uh, 100, like 3, 4, or something like that. And then I have some numbers. Um, and I want this to be the same length. Um, so it was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so these should be the same length. Let me just check. Length of A is 8. Length of A number is also 8. Good. Okay, now let's say that, oh, what could these be? So let's say, let's say you ask people how many siblings do you have? And this is, uh, these are the responses to 8 different people. And let's say num here is, um, I don't know, how many pets do you have? Something like that. And let's say we wanted to know um, what is the, so actually let me just call this siblings and let's call this pets. And let's say you wanted to know um, what's the average number of pets by people with less than, or I should say fewer than, than 10 siblings. So one way we could do this is just say mean of pets where siblings is less than 10. And it says it doesn't know what pets is because I haven't actually run these commands yet. Okay, so now they're in the, um, the working space. Now when I run this, it works. And I can also say, well, now give me the mean a number of pets where siblings is greater than or equal to 10. And those, are the, uh, those should be these two people. So that should be the average of 6 and 9 here. Um, but what if you want specific values? Let's say you want average number of pets by people with, I don't know, one or four siblings, something like that. Now, this will be, uh, you can't create a logical vector that says if it's either one or four by using just greater than or equal to. But what we can use is the in command. And the way the in command works is um, it creates a logical vector, so let's say siblings, and then we say in, and again, this is this in is surrounded by two percentage signs. And then we say what vector of possible values we want. So in this case, we want siblings in one or four. Let me run this. And what that will do is it will test for each value in siblings, is that value in this vector of possible values that I want, either one or four. So if we look at, let's look at siblings over here, the first value that's either one or four, so yeah, this is true. The second one, yep, that's one or four, so that's true. Third one is false. Uh, fourth one is true, because it's four. Fifth one is two, that's false, and so on. Um, and so now we can easily calculate the average number of pets by people with one, one or four siblings by saying mean of pets, but only in those cases where siblings is n, oops, not dollar sign, should be uh, percentage points in one or four. If I run this, I get 5.25. So that should be equal to the mean, let's just test this to make sure it worked, of the people, uh, no, that's going to be a bit of pain. I'm not going to do that. Oh, just trust me, it works. Um, yeah, so this uh, percentage in sign is really helpful in case you want to test for multiple different criteria. Um, Let's say, for example, you have a vector of, of data, which is gender, from some survey. And let's say the responses were male, female, but then let's say you have some people that um, said other, so they don't want to specify a specific gender. And they have some response, let's say age, and let's say they're, I don't know, 30, 23, 
40, 56. Now let's say you wanted to calculate the average age of the people, but only people um, who were male. So I could say mean of age, where gender equals male. A doesn't know what age is because I haven't run that yet. Okay, so the average gender of males was 43. And I can run it again for female. Or if I want to know what's the average age of gender, or the, the average age, but for those gen people who said either, uh, again, it should be percentages, either male or female. So this is uh, going to ignore the other case. And here I get 36.33. Uh, um, yeah, so this, uh, in survey data, this, um, this is a really helpful um, command. And let's see, let me look over my notes here to see if there's anything else I wanted to talk about. Ah, yes. One other thing that uh, logical vectors are really good for are counting cases or calculating percentages. So um, if you have a logical vector, um, let's say, let's create a logical vector, which is true, true, false, true. If you calculate some summary statistics like sum of that vector, R will treat true values as one and false values as zero. So create this logical vector. If I create, uh, calculate the sum, it says three. That means there's three true values. Now we can also use a trick. Let's say we wanted to know what percentage of values in a logical vector were true. Um, to do that, we can just say mean of log.vec. And what the mean will do is it'll just take the average of all the ones and zeros, and this ultimately in the end will give us a percentage of cases that are one. So in this case, we know that 75% of the values are true, so three out of the four. And this can be really helpful when we want to, for example, let's Let's look back at this uh, gender data up here. And let's say we want to know what percent of the cases were male. We can just say mean of gender equals male. And we see 50%. So 50% of the cases, two out of the four said male. Or we could also say uh, what percentage of cases were other. So mean of gender equals other. And that's 25%, one out of four. Or if we want to know what percent were either male or female, we see it's 75%. So um, yeah, uh, once you have logical vectors, they're not only useful for indexing other vectors, but they also can be helpful on their own to count cases by using sum. So summing a logical vector gives you a count of the true values or calculating a mean, uh, calculating a mean of a logical vector gives you the percentage of true values. Um, and this is something that I find really helpful and I, I really use quite a bit. Okay, and that covers the main points of chapter four and Yar, the Pirate's Guide to Art.